I decided to go hiking alone one weekend. I heard about this trail in the mountains that was supposed to be tough but beautiful. I packed my stuff, filled my water bottles, and left early in the morning to avoid the midday heat. The trail started off easy, with a gentle slope and wide paths. The fresh mountain air was refreshing, and the sounds of nature were calming. As I climbed higher, the trail became steeper and narrower. I had to watch my steps to avoid slipping on the loose dirt. Despite the effort, the views were amazing. I could see miles of thick forest below me, and the distant mountains looked awesome against the clear blue sky. After a couple of hours, I reached a fork in the trail. There was no sign showing which way to go, but I remembered reading that the left path led to a great viewpoint. I decided to go left. As I walked, the trail became harder to see, and the plants got thicker. I started to worry that I had taken the wrong path. But I really wanted to reach the viewpoint, so I kept going. The trail eventually disappeared completely, and I found myself pushing through thick bushes. I was sure I was lost. My heart started pounding, and I felt a growing sense of panic. I tried to go back the way I came, but everything looked the same. The trees closed in around me, and the sky above was just a thin strip of blue. I checked my phone, but there was no signal. I kept walking, hoping to find the main trail again. I marked my path as best as I could, breaking small branches and remembering unusual trees or rocks. Hours passed, and I was exhausted. My water was running low, and I hadn't eaten since breakfast. Just as I was starting to lose hope, I stumbled upon a small clearing. In the middle was an old, weathered sign pointing back towards the main trail. Relief washed over me, and I felt my spirits lift. I followed the direction indicated, and after about half an hour, I found myself back on a well-worn path. The rest of the hike was uneventful, but I couldn't shake the feeling of how close I had come to real trouble. When I finally made it back to the trailhead, the sun was setting. I took a moment to appreciate the beauty around me and to be thankful that I had made it out safely. As I sat there, catching my breath, I heard a rustling in the bushes nearby. I froze, thinking it might be an animal. But then I saw a figure emerge, a man in dirty clothes with a wild look in his eyes. He stared at me for a moment before turning and disappearing back into the woods. I quickly packed up and hurried to my car, my heart racing. Driving away, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. The man's image stayed in my mind, and I realized how close I had come to a different kind of danger. The mountains are beautiful, but they hide their secrets well. I learned to respect their power and to always be prepared for the unexpected. I decided to go on a solo hike last weekend. The weather was perfect, clear skies and a light breeze. I had my backpack filled with basics, water, snacks, a first aid kit, and my phone. The trail I picked was known for its great views and was moderately tough, just the kind of adventure I wanted. As I started my hike, everything seemed calm. The path was clear, and the forest around me was full of the sounds of birds and rustling leaves. I felt at ease, enjoying being alone and connecting with nature. After about an hour, I reached a fork in the trail. One path went up to a viewpoint, while the other went down into a thicker part of the forest. I chose the viewpoint, eager to see the wide landscape. The climb was steeper than I thought. My legs burned with each step, but I kept pushing forward, motivated by the thought of the view at the top. Finally, I reached the clearing and was rewarded with an amazing sight. Rolling hills stretched out before me, dotted with patches of trees and shining lakes. I stayed there for a while, taking in the scenery and catching my breath. After snapping a few photos, I decided to head back down. As I retraced my steps, I realized the trail seemed different. I hadn't noticed certain landmarks on my way up. My confidence started to waver but I told myself that I just needed to pay closer attention. The deeper I went, the more confused I became. Panic started to set in as I realized I was lost. The sun was beginning to set, 
and the forest grew darker by the minute. I pulled out my phone to check my location, but there was no signal. My heart raced, and I felt a knot of fear tighten in my stomach. I tried to stay calm, remembering the basic rules of survival. I had water and snacks, and I knew I had to find my way back to a familiar trail. I decided to follow the setting sun, hoping it would lead me west toward the trailhead. Hours passed, and I stumbled over roots and rocks, my exhaustion growing. Just when I was starting to lose hope, I spotted a faint trail marker in the dim light. Relief washed over me as I realized I had found a way out. I followed the markers carefully, and soon the path became more recognizable. Finally, I emerged from the forest and found myself back at the parking lot. I was dirty, tired, and shaken but safe. The fear and confusion I had felt in the woods seemed to melt away in the glow of the streetlights. As I drove home, I reflected on my experience. It had been terrifying, but it taught me the importance of preparation and respect for nature. From that day forward, I promised myself to always hike with a detailed map, a compass, and a fully charged phone. The experience had been a wake-up call, but it also reaffirmed my love for the outdoors. I knew I'd be back on the trail soon, but with a lot more caution and respect for the wilderness. As I pulled into my driveway, I noticed something odd. There, on my back seat, was a small, dirt-covered object I hadn't seen before. It was a carved wooden figure, roughly shaped like a person, its eyes crudely etched out. My mind raced, trying to remember if I had picked it up during my hike, but I was certain I hadn't. A chill ran down my spine as I realized the figure wasn't there when I had left the forest. I quickly grabbed it, intending to toss it away, but a sudden thought stopped me. What if this was a warning? Or worse, what if it was left by someone, or something, watching me in the forest? I dropped the figure and slammed the car door shut, hurrying into my house and locking the door behind me. That night, I couldn't shake the feeling that I wasn't alone. Every creak and shadow in my house seemed amplified, and I lay awake, my mind replaying every step of my hike, wondering what had really happened out there. The next morning, I found the wooden figure on my front porch, sitting there as if it was waiting for me. My heart pounded in my chest. I realized that the forest held more secrets than I could ever imagine, and my hike was just the beginning of something much darker. I had escaped the woods, but a part of it had followed me home. I always loved hiking. There was something about the peace, the fresh air, and the challenge of the trail that drew me in. One Saturday morning, I decided to explore a new trail I'd read about online. It was a bit out of the way, but the photos looked amazing, and the reviews praised its beauty and quiet. I packed my things, made sure my phone was fully charged, and set off early. The drive to the trail took about an hour, winding through thick forests and narrow, rough roads. When I finally arrived, I noticed there were no other cars in the small parking area. I shrugged it off, excited about having the trail to myself. The hike started out beautifully. The sun was shining, birds were singing, and the air was cool. I followed the marked path, which led me through different types of landscapes, thick woods, open meadows, and rocky areas with stunning views. About an hour into my hike, I came across a small stream. I stopped to take a drink and refilled my water bottle. It was then that I noticed something strange. There were no sounds of animals. The birds had stopped singing, and the forest felt weirdly still. Pushing aside the creeping unease, I kept going. As I climbed higher, the trail became narrower and rougher. At one point, I had to climb over some large rocks. That's when I saw it, a torn piece of fabric caught on a thorn bush. It looked like it had come from a backpack or a jacket. It was old and dirty, but fresh enough to suggest that someone had passed this way recently. I felt a chill run down my spine. I hadn't seen anyone all day, and the idea that someone else might be out here, possibly in trouble, made me uneasy. I pressed on, my senses now heightened. Every rustle of leaves, every crack of a branch, made me jump. Eventually, 
I reached a fork in the trail. The map I had printed showed only one path, but here were two. One path looked well used, while the other was overgrown and barely visible. I decided to take the well-used path, hoping it would lead me to a clearing or another landmark. As I walked, I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. My footsteps seemed unnaturally loud in the silence. After another twenty minutes, I saw something up ahead, a small, abandoned campsite. There was a collapsed tent, a rusted camping stove, and a few scattered belongings. It looked like it had been there for months, maybe even years. I carefully approached, looking for any signs of recent activity. There were none. It was as if whoever had been here had simply vanished. My unease grew into a gnawing fear. I decided it was time to turn back. I didn't want to risk getting lost or running into whoever, or whatever, had left that campsite. Retracing my steps, I tried to stay calm. The forest, which had seemed so inviting in the morning, now felt oppressive and sinister. Every shadow seemed to hide something, and I quickened my pace. After what felt like an eternity, I finally reached the familiar stream where I'd stopped earlier. Relief washed over me. I was back on the right track. As I made my way back to the trailhead, I couldn't stop thinking about the torn fabric and the abandoned campsite. What had happened out there? I would probably never know, and maybe that was for the best. The important thing was that I made it back safely. When I finally emerged from the forest and saw my car, I felt a wave of relief. I quickly got in, locked the doors, and started the engine. As I drove away, I glanced back at the trailhead, making a silent promise to myself to be more careful on future hikes. That night, I couldn't sleep. I kept replaying the day's events in my mind, unable to shake the feeling that I had narrowly avoided something terrible. Just before I finally drifted off, I checked my phone one last time. There, in my photo gallery, was a picture I didn't remember taking, a dark, blurry image of the campsite, with a shadowy figure standing just at the edge of the frame. The weekend was supposed to be a simple camping trip to relax. I had packed my stuff, enough food and water, and headed to the forest. The weather was perfect, clear skies, a light breeze, and the sun setting in shades of orange and pink. I found a quiet spot near a stream and set up my tent. As night fell, I lit a campfire and sat by it, enjoying the peaceful sounds of nature. The rustling leaves, the distant hoot of an owl, and the crackling fire were soothing. After a while, I decided to head into my tent and get some sleep. In the middle of the night, I woke up to a strange noise. It was a rustling sound, not too far from my tent. At first, I thought it might be an animal, maybe a raccoon or a deer. I ignored it and tried to go back to sleep, but the sound continued. It was getting closer. I grabbed my flashlight and carefully unzipped the tent. Shining the light around, I couldn't see anything unusual. The noise stopped. Feeling relieved, I went back inside and lay down. But then I heard it again, closer this time. It sounded like footsteps, slow and steady. My heart started pounding. I held my breath and listened carefully. The footsteps circled my tent. I didn't dare move. The steps were heavy, not like any animal I knew. They paused right outside the tent, and I felt someone or something standing there. Suddenly, I remembered my car keys and the emergency whistle I had brought. Slowly, I reached for them. I blew the whistle as hard as I could, the sound cutting through the night. The footsteps immediately stopped. I could hear the sound of running, heavy steps moving away from my tent, deeper into the woods. I didn't wait to find out what it was. I grabbed my essentials, threw them into my backpack, and rushed out of the tent. The moonlight was enough to guide me back to my car. I ran, adrenaline pumping through my veins, not looking back. When I finally reached my car, I jumped in, locked the doors, and drove away as fast as I could. The relief of being in a safe place was overwhelming. I drove straight home, not stopping until I was back in my driveway. The next morning, 
I called the park rangers and reported what had happened. They assured me they would check it out, but I never found out who or what was out there that night. All I knew was that I had narrowly escaped something or someone with bad intentions. The next few days were tense. I couldn't shake off the feeling of being watched. Every noise, every shadow outside my window made me jump. I decided to avoid overnight camping alone from then on. Weeks later, I was in a coffee shop, scrolling through news on my phone. My heart skipped a beat when I saw the headline. Hiker found dead in woods suspected foul play. The location was the same forest where I had camped. I couldn't read the details. I put my phone away, the reality of what I had narrowly escaped sinking in. It was a close call, and I couldn't help but feel that whoever or whatever was out there that night was still lurking, waiting for another chance. The thought sent chills down my spine. I was grateful to be safe, but the fear never truly left me. It was a warm summer evening when I decided to go camping alone in the woods. I needed a break from the city and thought a night under the stars would be refreshing. I found a quiet spot by a small stream, set up my tent, and started a fire. As the sun went down, the forest around me got darker, and the sounds of nature filled the air. After a simple dinner, I sat by the fire, enjoying the crackling sound of the burning wood. The night was calm, but as it grew late, I started to feel uneasy. The forest, which had felt so peaceful during the day, now seemed alive with strange sounds. I tried to brush it off, telling myself it was just because I was alone in a place I didn't know well. I decided to go to bed. I crawled into my tent, sipped it up, and lay down on my sleeping bag. The sounds outside seemed to get louder. Twigs snapping, leaves rustling, everything felt closer. I told myself it was just animals and that I shouldn't worry. But then I heard footsteps. They were slow and steady, moving through the bushes. My heart pounded. I lay still, barely breathing, listening. The footsteps stopped right outside my tent. I could see a shadow through the thin fabric. Panic set in, but I knew I had to stay calm. I quietly reached for my flashlight and my camping knife, ready for anything. Minutes felt like hours. The footsteps started again, moving away from my tent. I stayed alert, listening closely. Eventually, the sounds faded into the distance. I didn't dare move until I was sure it was safe. Finally, the forest grew quiet again, except for the usual night noises. Morning couldn't come soon enough. When the first light of dawn broke, I slowly unzipped my tent and looked around. There was no sign of anyone. Relieved but still shaken, I quickly packed up my camp. As I was leaving, I noticed footprints in the dirt, human footprints. I hiked back to my car, thankful for the safety it offered. When I got home, I reported the incident to the local authorities. They assured me they would check it out, but I knew I'd never go camping alone again. The experience reminded me of the unpredictable dangers of the wilderness and the importance of being prepared. A few days later, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. At night, I would wake up to creaks and thumps in my house, sounds I had never noticed before. One evening, as I was about to fall asleep, I heard a faint scratching sound coming from my bedroom window. I got up to check, but there was nothing there. Weeks passed, and the uneasy feeling persisted. I installed security cameras around my house, hoping to catch whatever was causing the noises. One night, I reviewed the footage. There, in the dark, I saw a shadowy figure standing at the edge of my yard, staring directly at my house. It stayed for hours, barely moving, before disappearing just before dawn. I realized that whatever had been out there in the woods had followed me home. The thought sent chills down my spine. Even now, I don't feel entirely safe, knowing that something, or someone, might still be watching me. I decided to go camping alone to clear my head. 
I found a spot deep in the woods, far from any trails. The first day was peaceful. I set up my tent, gathered some firewood, and enjoyed the quiet. By nightfall, the forest was silent, with only the occasional rustle of leaves. On the second night, I woke up to a noise outside my tent. It sounded like footsteps, slow and careful. I grabbed my flashlight and shined it around, but saw nothing. The sound stopped, and I told myself it was just an animal. The next day, I went for a hike, but I couldn't shake the feeling that someone was watching me. I kept looking over my shoulder but saw no one. When I got back to my campsite, I noticed small things were out of place. My water bottle was on the ground. My backpack was unzipped. It was unsettling, but I tried to brush it off. That night, I woke up again to the sound of footsteps, this time closer. My heart was pounding as I listened, straining to hear any movement. Then, something brushed against my tent. I froze, holding my flashlight tightly. The footsteps circled my tent, slow and careful. Suddenly, they stopped. I waited, barely breathing, for what felt like forever. Eventually, I heard the footsteps moving away into the forest. I didn't sleep for the rest of the night. At dawn, I packed up my things quickly, eager to leave. As I hiked back to my car, I felt that same uneasy feeling of being watched. I quickened my pace, glancing around constantly. When I finally reached my car, I threw my gear in the back and locked the doors. I drove away, feeling a sense of relief as I put distance between myself and the woods. As I glanced in the rearview mirror one last time, I thought I saw a shadow slip back into the trees. My heart sank. I never found out who or what was out there, but I knew one thing for sure. I wouldn't be camping alone again anytime soon. The thought of those footsteps still sends chills down my spine, and I can't shake the feeling that something was out there, watching, waiting. It was late afternoon when I decided to take a walk in the forest nearby. The thick trees always gave me a cool break from the summer heat. I needed some time alone to clear my head. As I walked deeper into the forest, the sounds of the town faded away, replaced by the rustling leaves and the occasional bird chirping. The trail was familiar, but it felt different this time. Maybe it was the cloudy sky or the way the wind whispered through the branches, but something felt off. I brushed it off and continued, enjoying the quiet and the beauty around me. I must have walked for an hour when I realized I hadn't seen any of the usual spots. No fallen tree where I usually rested, no split in the path that led to the small stream. Panic started to creep in. I checked my phone, but there was no signal. The battery was low too. Great. I turned around, hoping to retrace my steps. Every tree looked the same every path seemed identical. The sky grew darker, and the once calming rustle of leaves now sounded creepy. My pace quickened as the unease turned into fear. I stumbled upon an old, abandoned cabin. It wasn't there before. I hesitated but decided to take a closer look, hoping to find some clue or even shelter for the night if needed. The door creaked as I pushed it open. Inside, the air was musty, and the furniture was covered in dust and cobwebs. A broken chair, a rotting table, and shattered windows, it looked like it hadn't been used in years. I saw a map on the table, brittle and yellowed with age. To my surprise, it was a detailed layout of the forest. I traced my finger over the trails, trying to figure out my location. There was a red X, marked near the edge of the map, not too far from where I thought I was. Maybe it was a way out, a place to get my bearings. With new hope, I set out towards the X. The forest seemed even darker now, and I could barely see the path ahead. But I kept going, focusing on the map and the thought of getting home. Finally, I saw a break in the trees, light filtering through. I emerged from the forest into an open field. Relief washed over me as I saw the familiar outline of my town in the distance. I had made it out. The sense of dread that had clung to me lifted, replaced by a deep sense of gratitude. I learned my lesson that day. 
The forest was beautiful but could turn on you in an instant if you weren't careful. From then on, I always made sure to stick to the main trails and never ventured in without letting someone know where I was going. The experience stayed with me, a reminder of nature's power and my own vulnerability. As I walked towards the town, something made me glance back at the forest. In the distance, near the spot where I had emerged, I thought I saw a figure standing at the tree line. It was too far to make out clearly, but it looked like someone was watching me. I blinked, and the figure was gone. I shook my head, telling myself it was just my imagination. But the uneasy feeling returned, stronger than before. That night, as I lay in bed, I couldn't shake the feeling that someone, or something, had been in the forest with me. I thought about the cabin, the map, and the mysterious. X. I couldn't help but wonder if it had been a coincidence, or if I had stumbled upon something that was never meant to be found. In the days that followed, I avoided the forest. I stuck to the busy streets and well-lit parks. But every now and then, I'd catch a glimpse of the tree line in the distance, and a chill would run down my spine. I couldn't help but feel that the forest was waiting, watching, and that someday, it might call me back again. And if it did, I wasn't sure I'd be able to resist. 